Likeri, Likeri, Likeri. Lee Carrot, we're at Syke House Fisheries today. What lake's this called? Twin Isles? Yep, that's him. Yep. And talk us through what we are doing today. We are focusing on skimmers today, Rob. That is our main focus. How to catch skimmers on a commercial and, and specifically skimmers, not, not just silverfish, are, are we? We're trying to focus our attention on these fish. Right. Why skimmers? they are they are such weight building fish so like for example a lot of the fish we've had today are a pound and a half odd two pounder it doesn't take many fish to catch a big weight which a lot of the time is really important obviously um it's all well and good catching roach and silverfish and there's a days for that but whenever you get that bit more mild weather to win you've got to focus on these skimmers you've got to focus on these better quality fish so that was why today's focus of the piece is is on skimmers right so you're talking about winning obviously we're talking about winning yeah. in a competition in a match yeah because there's more and more silverfish matches now cropping up everywhere there's a there's a silverfish league here there's a silverfish league um at there's, the oaks there's, there's a silverfish over. league at rycroft there's a silverfish league at Larford, there's, yeah, there's, you know, there's, yeah. there's so many silverfish matches now all over the country, and there's some big money to be won as well throughout the winter fishing for silverfish on commercial. There is, and even if you, uh, even if you just don't want to go to those places, and you've got your local place where you go, I can guarantee you, silverfish will play a big part in your catch. That's what we talked about. How even in the warmer months, skimmers, not not roach, skimmers play a massive part in your final catch you see it so many times oh i had 30 pound of skimmers and two carp 50 pound of skimmers and two carp they're such an important fish so we felt why not come back here and show everybody how to catch right so fish. at the weekend you won a match on this was it this peg yeah it was on this peg yeah on this very peg yeah with what was the weight 40 Four, pound? 45 pound i had rob 45 pounds. Brilliant pound. days fishing. Amazing, amazing days fishing. I'll say at least 30 of that was skimmers. Right, so know. we've come back to sort of revisit the tactics. We've made a few tweaks, haven't we? Because you think you could probably always do it a little bit better than you than you did it at the weekend. So Definitely. we're always trying to improve. We've made a few tweaks. We've started on a slightly different tactic than how you started at the weekend. What I want you to do, I'd like you to catch one to start with. And then yeah. when we come in, we'll have a look through your rig because... I think there's a couple of interesting little points with your rig um, that we can talk about. But I want you to catch us a fish first. Well, I'm trying my hardest. You've just joined me off the back of about five in five chucks. Yeah, so I know. I'm expecting another one. This is a bit of a, the curse knows? of the camera because obviously you're on a storming run. So I thought, get the cam, <laughs> get the phone get the on. Camera out while you're on a storming run. Yeah, but it's classic skimmer fishing. They come in, they're, they're greedy, they, they, eat, they eat quickly. And then you sort of like, Pee him off a little bit, don't you? Look at that big lift. Yeah, big lift. Go on, yes, we've got him. Gonna be on, won't he? I don't think. He's Sorry, I'm in your way. He looks a bit hybrid. I'm me. in your way. Well, you well, right in my Sorry, way, we'll let it up. We'll let you go. Looks a bit hybridy to me. I've got to be honest, but we'll have a little look when we get him in, and we can have a look at the rig. It's brilliant fishing here. It is. Keep you out of the way. No. Yeah, nice. Uh, look at him ideas. coming in. Look at that. You've got to give me that as a silver bream, haven't you? I'm going to check. I'm going to check. I'm, I'm usually pretty good at fish. I'm, he's a silver bream. I'm usually pretty good at fish identification. So Look at that. just get Look rid at of that. your get rid of your pole. You let me have him, sure. Yeah, silver you? bream, silver bream, nice big eyes. Look. I mean, he's a, he's just all he's, his, obviously he's just fins are a little bit washed out. Solid he is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, solid he is, right? Yeah, he's a chunk. He's thing. over a pound. He is like for over definite, a pound, yeah. you know, really, really nice fish. Double maggot. Double maggot. Superb bait for some silvers. Right. Talk us through your commercial fishery winter skimmer rig. This is my this is my perfect rig, Rob. Nice short hook length. Now this okay. is your no nonsense rig, isn't it? Because we have got. Well, let's let's save the nice rig for the yeah, for we've the, got for the for the subs. I know, yeah, we've got a bit detail. we've got a bit of a faffer rig there, but yep. this is your no nonsense rig. So yeah, talk us through it. So short hook length, four inch hook length um, in O twelve. I've got a bulk there, look. Right, this is the important thing in my opinion. Very important. Three number 10s just on top of a four inch hook length. So okay. like that bite there, my float nearly. Yeah, might not have seen it on the phone, but the float, came out of the float water. Like, popped out of the water. This is a hugely important factor to this rig, Rob. There is another okay. shot about six, eight inches above it. 
Okay. This is like an anti-tangle shot. It keeps everything tight between the bulk, which is yeah, much further you've got, up. Yeah, because you've got a bulk, maybe, what's that? Almost two foot two foot away from the hook? I'm going to say it's two foot away. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So it's, it's two foot away from the hook. And this bottom shot is probably 11 inches because it's slightly yeah, this side yeah. of the bulk. So all you're you trying know. to do is just get rid of as much loose line as possible between the bulk and then that. Yeah, as the rig falls, if you bulk. can come out and get this on camera, right. effectively, as the rig falls, that shot, look how it kicks in the middle and okay. holds it down and then that drops down behind it like right. that whereas if you don't often that comes on top of your okay bolt it's just adding some weight to that loose bit of line exactly isn't it? and you know i haven't had any issues with no. the tangle or anything so like we've that got eight foot eight feet of water in front of us yeah talk to me about size of floats because you want something that's reasonably positive don't you we yeah, want to get the I bait mean, down I'm and we want to keep it nice and still i've got a three quarters of a gram uh Kerry float. Come on, on bring the, the float uh, down because it's not often you get a float named after let me, No, so. I suppose not. Go on then. So look, we've got a, this is a one gram Kerry. This is on my more aggressive uh, rig. It's got a nice fibre tip, super sensitive. So why is this called a Kerry then? Is it because it's really opinionated and loud? <laughs> <laughs> Why no, is it, why, no, is it just no. the shape that you like? Is uh, it? Um, I don't really know. The, the The main reason is when we designed the floats, we all had some input. I had a lot of input into this float in particular, so they gave it okay. my name. Right. Classic the, sort of still water sort of we shape, isn't it? That? It's brilliant. It's a lovely float. It's a nice, strong fibre tip, which is sensitive. Nice high wire, which means I'm stable, but but yeah. you know it's not going to bend out of shape. And that lovely tapered body. It's a standard shape float, really. Okay, then. And the next thing I want to talk about before you ship out, I know you're really keen to catch another so fish. Keen I to know. Catch another fish. You've got 014 um, mainline. Yeah. Obviously, nice and robust yeah. without going over the top. Yes. If you'd have used 020, it would just make the rig too stiff and that float wouldn't sit very nice. Without a doubt. But whereas I would probably want to use like 010 or even 08 mm. as a hook length material, you have gone for 012. Talk, talk to me why particularly because I've got a short hook length, Rob, this will want to spin up like crazy. Two red maggots, yeah, that's going to want to spin up like crazy. So if you put a light line on here, it will hinder you massively because as it, even as the bait sinks, it will spin and twist. Look at that. My hook length still in, in brilliant condition because it's nice and stiff. So I'd rather go a little bit heavier and maybe sacrifice the fact that I'm not on the lightest possible line for perfect presentation and i mean at the moment i also think when the when your bait's on the bottom for skimmers i don't think o12 is a problem i think once you get above o12 you might start having a few fish getting a bit finicky but okay. i think that's a very Not for the stunt aspect. we're catching today we're targeting fish over a pound aren't we so yeah and look at a big hybrid there you know yeah. they, do they really care i don't think they so do so it's not about strength it's just about being robust it's about robust and being able to fish okay being able to fish that's the key superb crack on I'm going to, but you've got me pole about a million miles <laughs> up in the air. Sorry. <laughs>